Hello, my name is Adam. And I'm Robert. And this is part two of our used questions you sent in for me to ask mm, for the segment that we're doing here today in Los Angeles on the This internet. evening, afternoon, good morning. Okay. <clears throat> Katie D. Leslie mm -hmm. would like to know, if you could go back in time and redo any tour, which one would it be and why? Hmm. That's a good question. We had a tour in 2002 together, Taking Back Sunday, The Used, and Blood Brothers. Oh, yes. That was an awesome tour. Wait, it, so you're saying you would redo that? It'd be pretty cool to redo it. Oh, oh, so, oh I guess I was taking the question like, like, redo it. Like, like do over. Yeah. No, yeah. just to experience the, like, how how in, how enjoyable it was. That's yeah, it was fun. That was I wouldn't take fun back time. any tour. I don't think I've done any tours that I hate that were awful or like. I mean, Pro Project Revolution with Snoop Dogg was definitely a, an estranged tour, but it was a great time for an alcoholic. <laughs> okay, Rita Swallow. Damn. Would like to know if you guys were to write a song to or about your fans, what would the message inside inside it be? to us. So it would be, if you're going to write a song to your fans, what would the message be? Sure. I think it would be along the same lines as a lot of uh, John Lennon songs, Power to the People. I, I think that, like me, a lot of people out there were convinced that there's nothing they can do to kind of alter the geopolitical situations of the world. Big words, big words, folks. But we can. So it would be a, it would be a empowering message of um, personal freedom. I think you already do that very well. We try to. Well, doing a good job. Okay. Thanks. Spencer Adam would like to know. <clears throat> Adam, Adam, bo-bladam, banana, banana, bo-bladam, me, madam, madam. You guys have been pretty adamant about getting your music out to the fans. Having not done the question yet. I think what you guys do to reach out to your fan group is unlike any other band out there. What do you see yourself doing in the future if the day comes when you stop writing music? Hmm. That's such a unique and strangely worded question. Yeah. I think that we are adamant about people enjoying their lives. If you don't really enjoy my music, we wouldn't adamantly, adamantly. Okay. So I, I mean, I guess... My dream situation with the business of, of music would be the abolishment of the business. I think the music should be free. I think the shows should be free. I think that fans or patrons of the art can <coughs> personally support their favorite artists and we can live off that kind of functionality. I think that's really how it works for like opera and a lot of different um, paradigms of music business. But uh, just seems like the artists get paid last and when they do, it's a pretty unfair deal. Everybody takes their chunk first. I think that just kind of, in my, in my perfect world, I could make music forever that people would just be able to listen to for free. Okay. Amanda DaCosta, <clears throat> she says, I read in another interview that you draw inspiration from authors. Very true. <clears throat> Bert, I know that you are an avid reader of Stephen King. Are there any songs you've written that draw inspiration directly from a specific book? Hmm. Stephen King is, um, I guess, kind of directly responsible for inspiring my refound love for reading. Um, the Ocean of the Sky is an EP we re released about a year ago, and um, the title track, The Ocean of the Sky, is actually an allegory for Homer's Odyssey. Really? So there you go. Hmm. Okay, well, Chris Flynn says, there seems to be a theme of change, evolution, and revolution. Are you reading these? I'm reading these no, to you. No, we'll go. Good. To your new songs. <laughs> Is there a message on this album that you are trying to get out to people listening? Which we've covered, I think. I think that you it, you answered it in your question. I think true revolution is, is now becoming the evolution of human beings I, away from bigotry and homophobia and racism and every type of uh, protected ignorance that we experience. So that's the, that's the message. 
Revolution means a, a personal knowledge that can touch the world. I'm picking up what you're putting down. I can, uh, I can uh, get down with that. <clears throat> so Haley Meredith Brown says, Bert, will you please... I will. <laughs> Bert, will you, will you please allow me to touch you <laughs> during the show in Atlanta? How would that be possible? We'll, we'll work it out. It would make my night even better, and I would love the used even more. Maybe you could touch me with your spirit of truth. Maybe we could both touch each other spiritually. There's hey. Emotionally, yeah. uh, mentally we could touch. We could touch dicks mentally. Well, I think it's a girl. Oh. But I mean, hey, I don't know. Well, we could touch private parts spiritually. A sp a sp That's dirty. That's what that A is. spiritual adjoining. Oh, see? And then you just took it there. There was a line you hopped right over. Okay. Jolie. I'll try to work it out so you can come up and touch my sweaty balls on stage. Oh, see? Even, <laughs> even further, further, the line just keeps going and going. Oh, okay. Jolene Pippen says, what is the most memorable thing a fan has thrown onto the stage during one of their the prosthetic leg? They just threw the Tossed leg. it on. And it had a built-in keg, a couple drawers for adult cigarettes. Really? And we brought him on the bus after. Jazz cigarettes? Jazz cigarettes. <laughs> brought him on the bus after and drank out of his leg. For, yeah, that is strange. Forever be the most interesting thing that's been thrown up on stage. Yeah. It was weird when somebody threw a pound of crystal methamphetamine on stage, too. Yeah. It was so fucking weird. Well, and then how fast you went through it. Man. <clears throat> that was a crazy tool. <laughs> Nathan Arthurs asks, if you had to get a tattoo of a lyric from Imaginary Enemies, mm. what would it be? Oh. I have well, a feeling that once this airs, <laughs> once this comes out, <laughs> Nathan Ar Arthurs might be getting whatever your answer is. So make it a good one. Imagine I would get a I would get a tattoo of Putin's face. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you're about to meet a dude named no, Nathan. No, no, no. He said so lyric. He said lyric, right? Yeah. So I would say. Um, you don't get to tell me what to do anymore you don't get to tell me how to live anymore good good david call would like to, to know are you ever going to release a physical copy of shallow believer physical copy that's a good question probably not yeah fuck him <laughs> all right maybe some vinyl could be in the works yeah julius olson says can we expect a B-side track album like Shallow Believer in the near future? Um, no. Good talk, okay. So, <clears throat> well? There's a lot of B-sides, but I think we're, uh, you know, we're more of a... It's more, more record, record band, it's record more, type band. It's more of a, yeah. Good talk. Well, that's all the questions I have from you guys. That was a great to, ending. To, just to Bert. So, so, so good. <laughs> well, thanks, Adam. Oh, well, there's, or we could end it like one of those Steve Brule, you know, who just kind of stare at one another. For your health. <laughs> yeah, check it out. <laughs> anyway, anyways. Don't take, don't, don't cut off your penis. <laughs> Did you see that? Go with your sister, stupid. His, <laughs> <laughs> Dingus. Dingus. He, uh, we just watched the episode. The, the episode's called Horse, and it's just Dingus. Yes. Oh, Genius. God, it's so good. I like the one where he goes to the, uh, the, the uh, sushi place, and he's like... Oh, no, I've never seen that. Oh, my that, God, they have the, the little thing. He's like, you got your peaches for the ginger, you got your <laughs> sushi, and you got your guacamole. <laughs> <laughs> and he just takes the whole oh, the wasabi. wasabi. <laughs> He's like, that's a spicy guacamole. <laughs> uh, John C. Riley, we, we, we love you, yeah. Steve Rule. You're the best. <laughs>